So I'm going to talk about how to stop your gums from killing you. And the traditional advice for the prevention of gum disease is that you floss and you brush and you do that twice a day. You use a good mouth rinse and you see your dentist two times a year. And look, I know you've heard that before. It's, it's really quite common sense and it is good advice. But really, it's only part of the equation. So I'm always asking myself, seeing as gum disease and your health, your systemic health are linked, is this advice enough? You know, so if we're brushing and flossing, seeing the dentist, is that really going to stop us getting tooth decay? Is it going to stop gum disease? And is it going to keep our mouths healthy? So what I've seen over the years that really got me thinking was, I see a lot of patients who tell me that they, they brush for two minutes twice a day, that they're flossing every day, they're using their mouth rinses, and I know they're coming to the dentist regularly because I'm seeing them, yet their gums still bleed and their gum health is not where it should be and it's actually getting worse. So you ask yourself as the dentist, well, are they really bad at cleaning their teeth? and they're just not doing a good enough job? Do they not really comprehend how long two minutes is? Do they think that they're doing it more than they are? Or is there something missing? Are they lying to me? Or is there something more that they should be doing and more advice that we can be giving them? And look, it is very disappointing for, for us as people when we know we're doing all the right things, yet it doesn't seem to be working. And you go from one dentist to another and they keep saying to you, you're not brushing enough, you're not flossing enough. And you think, well, how much more can I spend cleaning my mouth and still not see the results? Well, this is where we're not focusing on the bigger picture. So our lifestyle plays a huge role in our health and overall well-being. And it also plays a big part in the health of our mouth because after all, our mouth is part of our body. So just like your body, your gums need to be cared for properly. You need the correct nutrition that supports repair and regeneration and boosts your immune system and your natural defenses. So when I say nutrition, I don't want you to think about diet and weight loss and calories. Please don't focus on that. That's not what we're talking about here. What I'm talking about is getting optimal nutrition, getting all the proteins and the fats, the amino acids, um, the minerals and all the antioxidants and building blocks that you need for your body to function well. So I'm talking about eating real food, not processed foods and not weight loss. So when you've got chronic advanced gum disease, that goes hand in hand with chronic disease. So changing your diet and changing your life will improve not only the quality of your gum health, but it's going to improve the quality of your life and your lifespan. So it's it makes sense to me that if your, your gums are showing signs of there being something not right in the body, that we need to treat the body as a whole, not just keep going at the gums and telling you to brush and floss more. So when your gums bleed, when you're brushing or you're flossing, this is a red alert. It's actually a warning sign that you have a bacterial disease in your mouth and it's showing you that there's inflammation. And at this point, you should be thinking about why is this happening and making changes to stop it from continuing because it is not normal for our gums to bleed just because it happens a lot. And it seems to be only a few specks when you spit out or on your toothbrush. It doesn't mean that it's not serious. I'm sure if you washed your hands and they bled every time, you'd want to know how to stop it. But the problem is, look, we're human beings. And we like to pretend things are going to go away or that it's not that important. And we're just not very good anymore at listening to our body. So when your gums are bleeding, that's your body telling you something. That's your body sending you a signal to say, my body's bleeding. Something's not wrong. Please pay. Uh, something's not right. Please pay attention. But because we're not very good at listening to our body, we're also not very good at making the changes that we require. So instead, we'll try and ignore it, hope it goes away. Look, it's not painful, so do I have to do anything about it? So we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait until we make, you know, we, we know we need to make some lifestyle changes. You know, everyone understands what it is to live a healthy lifestyle. But instead of making those changes, we wait until we get a diagnosis of heart disease, high blood pressure, or even uh, worse, we might get cancer 
before we start thinking about making changes to our lifestyle. I just want to say thank you to Yasmin for sharing the video. I really appreciate it. That's really awesome. Thank you. I also want to thank everyone who's here live from across the globe. And if you're watching the replay, that's really cool. If you want to say hello, tell us where you're from or ask a question, then I'm going to be here to answer them while we're on this video tonight. And if you've got some other topics that you'd like to see me talk about, then feel free to put them in the list and I'll do some more Facebooks. We'll get, get those talked about. So we ignore things until they get bad. We wait until we get a diagnosis of something like heart disease or cancer before we stop. And we go, hang on, how have I been living? What's been going on? What's my body trying to tell me here? And what changes can I make? But these conditions like heart disease and high blood pressure, diabetes, and even cancers are actually linked to gum disease. So those bleeding gums, they're saying to you, look, hey, come on, listen up. This is an early warning sign that your body is not healthy and that worse things are about to follow if you don't start paying attention and do something about it. So could you make some changes? Could you stop putting toxins into your body and start putting the nutrients in that you need instead? Well, there are many things that we can do. Um, to, we, there are things that we are doing that activate bacteria that cause gum disease and tooth decay. So if we eat sugar, we're going to get tooth decay. If we have poor nutrition, we don't sleep well, we don't get enough exercise, then our bodies are going to suffer. So if we can keep a balance between the good and the bad bacteria in the mouth, then we won't get tooth decay or gum disease. It's that simple. However, if we've got poor nutrition or we're overly toxic, there's going to be a shift in the bacteria levels in our mouth and gut, especially if we feed them processed grains and sugars. So this means we get an increase in the decay bacteria and the bacteria that cause gum disease. Now, this bacteria that causes the gum disease doesn't just affect your gums. It actually spreads into your blood and it circulates through the body and creates systemic disease. And we have a saying that if you've got inflammation anywhere, you have inflammation everywhere. So bleeding gums is a sign that your gums are inflamed and that inflammation is circulating around your body and causing other precursors for disease. So dentistry will focus on fixing things, on treating disease, often without asking why you're having these issues or getting to the underlying cause. And sadly, in medicine and in dentistry, there is very little money in teaching you how to stay healthy. So the focus is on treating your illness, not preventing you from getting it, which is actually costing us billions of dollars in, in health, lost productivity, uh, medications, pharmaceuticals, hospital admissions, surgeries, etc. It, it just doesn't make sense to me that we don't focus on preventive care. So one of my things is I want to help you stop and prevent your dental disease so your mouth stays healthy. So I want to be able to remove and treat any active disease that you have when I first see you, get your mouth back in a state of health and help you maintain it that way. So can we as dentists and dental professionals teach you what you need to stay healthy? Well, of course we can. I can show you how to care for your mouth, I can teach you what foods support you to prevent gum disease and tooth decay and improve your overall health. The problem is, if I'm spending time doing that, I can't really bill you for it according to the health funds and insurance companies. But as a holistic practice, we want to spend more time with you and we want to help you get back on track. So we're always looking at ways we can do that. And this is one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing Facebook Lives is so we can get this information out there that we don't have time to share with you when you're at the office. I want to say hello to Joe for joining us. I want to say hello to Yasmin for still being here. Everyone who's joining live, thank you very much for popping on. Really love seeing you all here. If you've got any questions or any comments, please feel free to type them in and I'll answer them live while I'm on air. So yes, we can teach you how to stay healthy. We can teach you how to look after your mouth. We can teach you how to eat 
to support you to not have gum disease and tooth decay, which will also help improve your health. So, as I've said, bleeding gums and systemic health go hand in hand. If your gums are unhealthy, you have a gum, a gum infection and that needs to be addressed. Otherwise, you're going to have this active chronic disease that spreads into your bloodstream without you having to do anything. It's just happening. But when you chew, you talk, you brush your teeth, you're going to be putting pressure on the teeth and the gums and you're forcing more bacteria into the body by stimulating the blood circulation around your teeth. And I want to ask a question and I want to ask, you know, why is it that dentists think it's okay for you to have bleeding gums? So why do we say, you know, and I'm talking we as people, but even including dentists, why do we say it's okay, it's only bleeding a little bit, it's not that bad? Why do we think it's normal that our gums bleed when we brush? Because I'm telling you now, it is not. Your gums should not bleed. So imagine you took that nail brush and you scrubbed your nails. You know, you're giving your hands a good clean, scrubbing around your fingernails, and blood started to come out from under your nails. Would you be alarmed? Would you be worried, concerned? Would you want to know how to make it stop? Of course you would. So why do we not react the same way when it comes to our gums? Why are we not thinking, oh my God, my gums are bleeding? You know, we should be on the phone straight away to the dental office. My gums are bleeding, what should I do? They are not supposed to bleed. It's a signal that something is wrong. And your dentist should never, never, ever tell you it's okay that your gums are bleeding a little bit. I would just be horrified to hear that because it's not normal, it's not healthy. So this is crazy because those bleeding gums are telling you you have active disease and an infection that is pouring into your bloodstream. This, is a, this means you're walking around with a, a time bomb, a time bomb for systemic disease. There's an infection, there's something going wrong with your gums and it needs to be treated and treated properly. So if the dental profession are only doing quick cleanings and not talking about food and lifestyle, they are missing an opportunity to change people's lives for the better and to help not only prevent tooth decay and gum disease, but life-threatening diseases too. Now that for me, got me past a point in my career where I was sitting there going, there has to be more than just drilling and filling teeth. There has to be more than just telling people they need to brush and floss more. There has to be more we can do to support people. And once I realized that there was more pieces to the puzzle and started putting them together, I got much more job satisfaction and I got more enjoyment from what I did. My team really got into the vision and we could see that we were having an opportunity to change somebody's life, to make a difference. And that's what spurs me on to do what I do. And that's why I love going to work every day, talking the eardrums off my patients while we're working on them, trying to help them get the most information and the most benefit from each appointment. So your mouth is part of your gut. Now your gut bacteria help control and support your immune system. Now if you eat incorrectly, you mess up these bacteria and you increase bad bacteria. And this causes inflammation in the gut and that inflammation spreads to your bloodstream. It also can cause what's called leaky gut where it opens up the joins between the cells in the wall of your gut and it allows food that's partially digested to go out in your bloodstream, which as you can imagine, isn't a good thing. But the same conditions that alter the balance of your gut bacteria will also affect your oral or mouth bacteria. So this change in the gut and the mouth bacteria balance, it can be reversed. It can be reversed by eating more nutrient dense and anti-inflammatory foods foods like fresh vegetables, meat and fish, and by avoiding processed grains and sugars and those processed seed oils as well, because that's not how nature intended us to eat them. So healthy living can and does make a huge difference to your health. But if no one's telling you that there's a link between gum disease, food and lifestyle and your overall health, you're not being kept in the loop you're not being given the full picture and you're actually essentially in the dark. So you're at home flossing and brushing because the dentist or the hygienist told you, you've given it your all with your mouth rinses and doing everything you've been told. 
yet you're, you're only being given a part of the equation. So it's a little bit like having a personal trainer. And you go once a week, you do your 30-minute PT session, then you come home and you drink a beer, you eat a you know, box of chocolates, and you can't understand why you're not getting fitter and you're not losing weight. It's because you're not being given the rest of the building blocks that you need to put into place to achieve the end result. And it's the same with your gum health. If we're just telling you to brush and floss, there's a huge part of what's underlying the reasons why we get gum disease missing. So what can you do to prevent your gums from killing you? Number one is to reduce the pathogenic or harmful bad bacteria in your mouth and stop them spreading to your bloodstream from your gums. So what you want to be aware of is that there's been a big increase now in foods where they're being labelled as natural, healthy and organic. But it doesn't actually mean it's good for your health. For example, those sticky muesli bars with all the dried fruits and dates, they're actually full of sugars and they're sticky. They're sugars that just stick in your teeth and in between your teeth and it stays there and it remains there and it's fueling those harmful bacteria. So just because something's labelled natural doesn't mean that it's in the right balance and, and the right balance constituency or con consistency sorry for you and your teeth so the answer is you know what we've been taught is you've got to wipe out those bacteria you've got to brush them all off you've got to floss them away you've got to use a mouthwash and we've got to kill them all well no that's not the answer either because you're going to kill off all the bacteria in your mouth and this would be like trying to take uh, antibiotics and you know when you take antibiotics, it doesn't just kill the bacteria that are causing your infection. It actually harms your gut bacteria as well. And that's why you're recommended to take a, a, a probiotic to help rebalance the gut once you've took antibiotics. So imagine you're using this really strong antibacterial mouthwash. You're going to be killing off more than just the nasty bacteria. So in normal dental plaque, there are actually healthy species of bacteria there and they're there to help protect you and your gums. They provide a way to neutralize acidity in your mouth and fight the pathogenic bad bacteria. And they also help supply nutrients that help remineralize your teeth when they come into contact with sugars and acids. So it helps to remineralize your teeth with the minerals from your saliva. So the problem only arises when your dental plaque, the bacteria that naturally live in your mouth, become unhealthy because you're feeding it every time you eat with sugars in your diet at every meal and every snack. That's going to alter the balance of the good and the bad bacteria and that's going to lead to a buildup of plaque and the nasty type of plaque that's going to attack your teeth and gums. So the key is not to remove all the plaque but to reduce the bad bacteria and remove the buildup that will cause damage to your gum health. Now, we need to dislodge the unhealthy bacteria and we need to do that by brushing and flossing. But we also need to suppress bad bacteria by eating foods that keep them under control. So this is fresh fruit, vegetables that contain nitrates, so that's green leafies. When you eat nitrates, what happens is the bacteria that are living in your mouth, and especially those on your tongue, they convert the nitrates to nitrites, which when you swallow them, convert to nitric oxide. And that's going to help you manage your blood pressure. And it also is a natural anti-inflammatory, and it helps maintain your cardiovascular health and your gum health. So we need to eat lots of plants to improve and support our health and good bacteria. So as I said before, it's also not a good idea to use a mouthwash that's going to kill all your mouth bacteria. You need to use a mouth rinse that supports the balance of the mouth bacteria to protect you to stay healthy, to combat tooth decay and gum disease and prolong your life. So if you've got one of those mouthwashes that you're just, oh, it's burning, 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 you can hardly hold it in, you've got to spit it out, that's probably a little bit too aggressive and I would just 
maybe use it as toilet cleaner rather than washing it around your mouth because it doesn't really belong there. Also, if you're using a mouthwash, look for one that's alcohol free because using alcohol on a regular basis to rinse around your mouth, it's gonna dry out your mouth and reduce your saliva flow. It's also been shown that it can cause cancer. So I'm really strongly urging you to use an alcohol-free mouthwash. Look for something that's more natural, has essential oils and antibacterials and anti-inflammatory agents. So to keep your mouth healthy, what can you do? You can change your diet, you can change your oral hygiene, and you can use products that are going to support your health and well-being. So thank you everyone who's here live. It's really great having you here. Um, please give us some hearts and let Facebook know you're enjoying this. Leave some comments, say hello, tell me where you're from, ask any questions. And if you're watching the replay, then thank you so much for joining me and investing your time in learning more about your health. And so I'm talking about how to stop your gums from killing you. So we've talked about brushing and flossing, how important that is, we talked about diet and talked about that it's not normal for your gums to bleed and bleeding gums is actually a sign that something is wrong, that you have a bacterial infection that's spreading around the rest of your body and causing inflammation in your mouth and elsewhere and how that's linked to heart disease, high blood pressure and even types of cancers and diabetes. So to keep your mouth healthy, what are you going to do? So you need to remove the unhealthy dental plaque by brushing into the gum space and that's where your gum joins your tooth. Now, if you can get your toothbrush at about a 45 degree angle into that space, you're going to be removing the bacteria that are sitting in, in that little crevice, a little bit like cleaning under your fingernails, and you won't be harming the gums. So you also need to clean in between the teeth and you need to do that with floss and into dental brushes. And they're like a little bottle brush that you work in between the teeth. You also need to clean your tongue. A lot of the bacteria that are responsible for tooth decay and gum disease will harbor on the tongue. So you need to use a proper tongue scraper and you get that as far back onto the tongue as possible to that place that it does actually make you want to gag a bit. Then scrape forward from there several times to clean the bacteria and build up off your tongue. Now at first when you use a tongue scraper, your tongue doesn't like it very much and you can feel like, I'm going to throw up in the sink and it can put you off. The key is not to go too far back for the first few times, is to just gradually go a little bit further and further and train your tongue to get used to it. And eventually you can get quite a way back and you can clean that build up off the tongue and that's going to keep your mouth nice and healthy and fresh. And it actually helps your tongue detox. Hey Simon, good to see you here. Hey Nadine, great that you're on here live. Thank you for joining. So. The real key to keeping your mouth healthy is to eat the right foods, not eat the wrong foods. The most damaging foods are freeze sugars, uh, which are added to foods, um, fruit juice concentrate, which is actually just concentrated sugar with no fiber and no goodness. So I'm not, not a fan of fruit juice. Um, you don't get the, the goodness that you get from fruit. So if you want something, you know, have an apple, have an orange, eat it as nature delivered it. If you want to have something sweet, then you can use raw honey because that doesn't stimulate the, the, the breeding of the bad bacteria. But don't heat it because once you heat raw honey, it kills its natural biological activity because it's actually antibacterial. And you want to keep it in its natural form so that it helps support health. You can also use coconut oil on your gums. That is antibacterial. But I'm not a big fan of you swooshing it around for too long. Because once you overdo it, you can actually start killing off the bad bacteria. So what foods am I recommending here? Let's make it really clear. So lots of leafy green vegetables, nuts and seeds, meat and fish. And that's pretty much it, really. So I want you to avoid things like processed grains. So that's bread, crackers, pastas rice and they're very highly inflammatory to your gut and to your mouth and those types of food are going to lead to poor gum health and loss of bone structure hey harold nice to have you here from germany thanks for joining must be pretty early in the morning there um, i want you to eat fish like sardines shellfish um, foods that are high in vitamin c like citrus and broccoli or broccoli depending on how you like to say it um, your berries which have lots of antioxidants in 
and get some vitamin D. And the best way to get that is to have some sun exposure without sunblock. The key is not to get burnt. So it's working out, you know, like for me, I'm quite fair. I live in a, a hot country where the sun's very intense. And, it, you know, so if I get half an hour early morning, late afternoon, I'm not going to burn and I'm going to get my vitamin D. You've got to work out what works for you. Now, vitamin D is crucial for your overall health and dental health. Now, if you're a bit worried about getting out in the sun, you can take cod liver oil. You can eat free range eggs because the yolks there are a good source of vitamin D. You can also, you're also going to need to eat lots of antioxidant foods. And again, this comes from vegetables and berries. You need your healthy fiber and you'll get that from the fruits and vegetables. So you want to be eating real food as clean and as organic as you can to reduce chemical exposure and to get the nutrients that you need. Now, if you do have gum disease, eating's gonna help, but it's not gonna fix everything. We've gotta clear away that nasty buildup of bacteria that's around the gum lines and under the gum surfaces. So to treat that infection, that needs to be taken care of by the dentist and the dental hygienist. You can use essential oils to support the healing, but at this stage, I would be as gentle with your gums as you possibly can. So you don't want to be using really powerful things like a water pick at this stage until the gum health resolves. Because you don't want to accidentally force infection and bacteria deeper down into those gum spaces or pockets. Now, I'm also a big fan of recommending supplements like vitamin C and CoQ10 because they're going to support healing. They're not going to treat the disease because, as I said, you've got to remove the, the plaque bacteria and get rid of that harmful bad bacteria and get the balance right in the mouth. And you need to help do that by re-establishing proper diet. So there are lots of things you can do. And I see people and they come in and I say to them, look, you've got really deep pockets. You've got advanced gum disease. This is what we need to do. And their response, and look, I'm trying not to get a little bit on a rant or get frustrated here or roll my eyes too much, is that they're going to just go home. Hey, Anne, lovely to see you. Great to have you here. So I was just talking about gum health and I was just talking about um, coconut oil and oil pulling. So if you're enjoying this, please give us some, some hearts, say hello, um, say hello. And I'm just going to talk about, and olive oil would be the same, Nadine, so it, it falls into a, a similar thing. So when you do oil pulling, it's not going to get into those deep pockets. So even though it's got antibacterial properties, if you use it overly so, if you use it too much, it can damage the healthy bacteria. So if you do it for the 20 minutes as this, they recommend, it's going to kill off the good stuff too. So you can use, you know, like olive oil or coconut oil to swoosh around for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. You can use your essential oils or a good natural mouthwash. And look, during pregnancy, Nadine, because of the changes in hormones, your gums do bleed more easily. They are much more reactive to any bacteria. So the keys for a pregnant lady is to really eat a nutrient dense diet. Make sure you're taking really good care of yourself and you're seeing your dentist and your hygienist regularly during your pregnancy so that any buildup is cleared away from the gums very quickly and they don't progress into active disease. The good thing is that once you've had baby and your hormones settle back down, the gum health will quickly resolve as long as there hasn't been a lot of damage um, because you haven't maintained your care. So oil pulling is not going to get into those deep pockets. We as dental professionals need to get into those deep pockets for you. We need to clear out the build up, allow the gums to tighten back up around your teeth, reduce the inflammation and then help you to keep that that way. So the aim is to allow the healthy bacteria to do their job by creating an environment where they can thrive. And this comes from our lifestyle and our oral care habits. I'm just getting loads of hearts and thumbs up and thank you, I'm really enjoying it. It's just distracted me slightly from what I'm saying. Hey Ulrika, good to see you here. Uh, we're talking about gum health and if you're watching the replay then thank you so much for joining us. And if you've come in on, on the back end then do wait for the replay and go watch the beginning bit because then it'll all make sense. So the aim in treating gum disease is to allow the healthy bacteria to do their job 
create that environment where they're going to thrive and we're going to do this through lifestyle changes and good oral care habits so preventing tooth decay and gum disease and systemic health po conditions is possible if you're willing to make the changes required in your diet and switch from processed foods to eating real foods getting regular sensible sun exposure reduce your stress and your toxin levels ensure that you're getting good quality sleep a nice regular moderate exercise exercise doesn't have to be the sort where you just feel completely like you're gonna die a walk a swim absolutely fantastic and so yeah look that's a great question Nadine what's the right movement with the brush um, well, maybe we can show you a little bit about that now they've done tons of research studies on what's the right way to brush should it be up and down side to side circular movements should we vibrate it and look really there isn't an answer there is no right way to brush but there are wrong ways to brush um, you don't want to be brushing too hard so if you find that your toothbrush after a few weeks all the bristles have gone like this and it's all bent and chewed out of shape you're brushing too hard you want a nice light motion almost like a vibration if you can get that going a little bit of circular is fine but if if this is your tooth and you've got the gum space you want to angle it's a bit hard to show you. oh there we go you want to angle the brush in at the gum line at about 45 degrees and give it a little bit of a vibrate now trying to clean your teeth manually and getting it spot on is quite difficult um, so we recommend a Sonicare power brush and that's a type of electric toothbrush and it vibrates and pulsates and I find it gives a really great clean without damaging the teeth so you want a nice soft brush with a small head soft action now if you do brush too hard there's some tips you can hold your, your brush hang on let me see there we go you can hold your brush a bit more like a pen so you're brushing like this which is how dentists kind of move their equipment it's going to take some practice and retraining or you can stick your little finger out when your little fingers sticking out when you're brushing you can't actually grip as hard and so you if you are your toothbrush is going to probably bounce off your teeth a little bit but the key is for toothbrushing is being thorough being methodical and cleaning each section a little bit at a time um, I was told that you have to clean each tooth surface about eight to ten times to get the sticky plaque off so if you're just flicking around and you're going for it like this you're going to miss bits and you're also going to be doing some bits too hard and too much and it can, can start damaging the gums there so nice methodical start in one spot work your way around do every surface work your way back that's the best way I feel to to brush so if you if you can't work out whether you're up and down side to side around round and round I don't think that really matters as long as you're taking your time and you're getting over each surface so I hope that answers your question thanks for your comment Harold that's really lovely yeah i i agree yasmin the the sonicare brushes there they are amazing yasmin's just saying she's completely converted and would never go back and i tell you if i'm traveling and i don't take my power brush with me i really really miss it so yeah i, I got i gotta get me another one which is crazy because you know i do have them in stock so where were we uh, we just okay so we're talking about preventing tooth decay and gum disease and how that also helps prevent systemic health conditions so if you're willing to make changes switch your diet so you're eating real food avoid processed foods avoid um, sonic care I'll type it in the comments for you Nadine and yeah if you if you want one then certainly let me know and we can we can get that down to you um, or we can find somewhere a little bit nearer okay um, Hi, uh, Yasmin's just saying that it's so good the battery lasts two weeks between charges. So that's that's great. Yeah, they, they do last very, very well. Um, I've had mine now for five years and never had to replace it. And you just change the heads as you go along. So we, we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do a Facebook Live just on the Sonicare toothbrush. Hey, Yasmin, we should get you on and you could show everyone. <laughs> you, could, you could be my uh, Sonicare toothbrush model. So as I was saying we can prevent gum disease tooth decay and systemic health problems make some changes in our diet switch from processed foods to eating real foods get some sensible sun exposure um,
deal with toxins, reduce those. Yasmin's up for doing a Facebook Live for me. I'll, I'll set it up. I've got the technology to do it, Yasmin. That would be really cool. We'll do an interview. Um, and you've got to ensure that you get healthy sleep and some good exercise. So if you don't want your gums to kill you, then stop ignoring the fact that they're trying to tell you something. Please don't ignore those bleeding gums because that is a sign that you've got active disease. And until that's treated, you're going to have ongoing health issues, even when you switch to a healthier lifestyle. We've got to do everything in tandem. Things have to go hand in hand. You've got to look at the whole picture. You can't just do one part and ignore something else. Of course, changing your diet is going to have a massive impact. But if we want to really get you healthy and have you living a long, fulfilling life where you live a good quality life, then we've got to address each part of the puzzle. So I recommend taking a holistic approach, address all the underlying issues, remove the harmful bacteria that build up from around the teeth and under the gums, and this is gonna make significant and lasting benefits. So I wanna just thank everyone who's been here live tonight. That's been really nice with the interaction. It's been a lot of fun. If you're watching the replay, then thank you so much. I'm Rachel Hall. I'm a holistic dentist. I have a dental office in Brisbane called Evolve Dental Healing. If you'd like to know more, if you want to book an appointment, then please give us a call on 07 37 201811 and we'll be delighted to help you and answer your questions. So before I say goodbye, if you do have any more comments or any questions, this is your opportunity to put them in. Or if you'd like me to talk about any topic with dental or health, pop it in the comments box and I'll be more than happy to do a Facebook Live. And watch out, my team have dared me to do some more lives during the week. So I might just do some in between some patients or do them during my lunch break. I'm going to do some behind the scenes stuff. I'm going to put it back on my team and we might do some impromptu one-on-one -on -one interviews with the team. I wish you were closer to my dear friend Anne. Um, it's a long distance between Australia and the UK and this is why I give back this way with the Facebook Lives. I mean I've been at work all day and uh, my family are getting dinner ready but I want to share as much of my knowledge and wisdom as possible with as many people to help them get the understanding and empower themselves when it comes to their dental health so that they can ask the right questions when they're going to their dentist even if they're not coming to me so thank you so much for all the hearts and likes thank you for joining me live thanks for the comments i'm just going to flick out of my notes here and i'm going to have a look at what we're going to talk about next time because i think this is the hot topic that everyone's actually been waiting for and let me just navigate my way around the technology so next week, oh, Ronnie, nice to see you. I'm just wrapping up, but I reckon you'd enjoy this video. So watch the replay because it's talking about how to stop your gums from killing you. And I know that's a topic that's right up your street with you being a dental hygienist. So next week, please tune in because I'm going to be talking about mercury filling removal and how we do that and how we approach it and how you can make sure that you're asking the right questions so that you get the right process done so that you don't get exposed to unnecessary mercury during the process. So thank you again everybody for joining live, share the video, put your comments in the comments box. If you're watching on the replay and you've got questions, pop them in the comments and I will get round to answering them. If you'd like me to do a video about a topic, then just pop that in there and we'll get that on, on board. And Yasmin, me and you are going to have a Sonicare chat on air if you're up for it. That would be really, really fantastic. So thank you, everyone. I'm Dr. Rachel Hall of Evolved Dental Healing in Brisbane, Australia. If you'd like to contact us to make an appointment, my number is 07 37 201811. See you next week and I'll be talking about removing amalgam fillings and how we do that safely. So if you've got friends who'd like to join in, let them know that I'm going to be live at 5.30 on Thursday and I'll be here having fun with you all and answering your questions. Thank you very much.